Hi, I'm John Hornick. Welcome to Lesson 77 of Chef's Apprentice, Learning to Cook Like a Pro, One Small Plate at a Time. This lesson is roasted butternut squash and chev ravioli with sage, diced pancetta, walnuts, and brown butter. This is a great ravioli. The mixture of sweet roasted squash and slightly sour goat cheese is simply delicious. Add walnuts, pancetta sautéed in duck fat, and butter, and you have a decadent dish for a crisp fall or winter night. Here you will use the pasta master recipe and the ravioli master recipe and make a filling and a sauce. You will cook the raviolis a few at a time in a wide and relatively shallow pan so they cook gently and you can watch them. The challenge is to make perfect raviolis and to serve them hot with the other components of this dish. Techniques today are dicing, slicing and chopping, seasoning and adjusting seasoning, roasting squash, making a pasta filling, making pasta and ravioli, sauteing and keeping warm, cooking ravioli, plating, garnishing, from, garnishing and garnishing from on high, and grating. So let's start cooking. All right, let's talk about the mise en place for lesson 77. Uh, we're gonna need one batch of freshly made pasta, I just made this a little while ago, uh, from the uh, Pasta Master recipe, which is lesson 55. And uh, keep that in the refrigerator until you are ready to uh, use it. Okay. We're also going to need to have a butternut squash. Uh, we'll need to have some uh, cornmeal for dusting the pan that will receive the raviolis. We need to have some extra flour, quarter cup, half a cup, something like that. You won't need that much probably, but you should need some, you'll need some extra flour for when you're making the, um, the ravioli. We need to have about eight ounces of soft chev or goat cheese. I've got uh, 10, 10 and a half ounces here. I, I won't be using that much, but you'll need maybe as much as eight ounces. Uh, and, it, and it depends really on the proportion. You're going to do about two parts of butternut squash to one part of chef. And butternut squash come in all different sizes, right? So we can't really plan that out in advance. We're going to do that by eye, right? Then uh, we'll need some olive oil. We'll need to have about 10 tablespoons of uh, melted butter, preferably clarified butter. But if you don't have clarified right now, that's fine. We'll kind of clarify it as we're cooking it. Uh, we'll also need to have um, some kosher salt and uh, pepper mill. We need to have some diced pancetta. Now you can buy pancetta and then dice it yourself, but you can also buy this uh, Calamico's uh, brand, which is already diced. It comes in about a quarter of an inch uh, dice, and uh, it comes in a four ounce package, and that's exactly how much we need, okay? About four ounces of uh, diced pancetta. Then we'll need to have about one tablespoon of duck fat. Now. You should have duck fat left over from the duck breast master recipe, which was lesson 27. Also, I have a bonus lesson on rendering duck fat and making duck cracklings. And also, I think we made a duck recipe in lesson 28. So from those two uh, recipes, you should have some leftover duck fat. If you don't have duck fat, just you can use butter. Uh, all right, then we'll need to have about a half a cup of um, coarsely chopped walnuts. Now I bought these coarsely chopped. You know, they're in sizes about the size of a, of a pea, okay? So you need about a half a cup of coarsely chopped walnuts. About two tablespoons of freshly chopped sage. And then we'll need to have some shaved Parmesan cheese. Now, I bought it shaved. You can buy a hunk of it, shave it yourself. If you don't have shaved, uh, or if you prefer to have um, grated, just um, uh, grate some fresh Parmesan cheese from a hunk of Parmesan cheese, or you can buy it grated. I have grating as one of the um, uh, one of the techniques we're going to do today, uh, but uh, you could just use the uh, uh, the uh, shaved Parmesan cheese or pre-grated cheese. Okay, that's all of the um, uh, ingredients that we'll need. We'll break, come back, and I'll show you the equipment for lesson 77. All right, for equipment, we're going to need a cutting board and chef's knife. Um, I just sharpened my uh, Japanese Aratsugu uh, chef's knife yesterday. It is a, back to being scary sharp. And we're going to need that to chop the sage and to chop the walnuts if you didn't buy pre-chopped walnuts. I will also need to have the uh, pasta maker, pasta machine. That's probably, I think that's in the upper part of the shot attached to the counter. Uh, we'll need to have one or two sheet pans. Now, um, we're going to use one sheet pan to roast the squash and one sheet pan to receive the ravioli after we make them. However, we're going to roast the squash early and then chill it uh, after we mix it with the cheese. So you could just use one sheet pan, wash it off, and use it to receive the ravioli. Same thing with the pastry brushes. We're going to need two brushes, one or two brushes. We're going to use one to uh, brush the squash and one to help make the ravioli. 
So you could uh, wash it out if you only have one brush. Also need to have our um, pastry knife and a two and a half inch round ravioli cutter. Uh, we'll need to have a wide shallow pan to cook the ravioli. And uh, we did this in the ravioli master recipe. It's a lot easier to watch the ravioli and make sure they don't overcook if you use a wide shallow pan as opposed to a deep narrow pot. Okay. Uh, then we're also going to need to have um, a slotted spoon uh, to get the ravioli uh, out of the pot. And we'll need, we'll need to have just a, um, a, a tablespoon that you would use at the dinner table uh, to, meet, to make the ravioli and to scoop out the squash. Uh, we'll also need to have a mixing bowl to mix the squash with the chef. And then we'll need to have a saute pan. Now, um, saute pan, I've already melted the butter in the saute pan, and that's what we're going to use it for. We're going to use it to melt the butter and then to cook the um, uh, saute the nuts and the pancetta. So we need a saute pan as well. Uh, then we're going to need to have a um, camera cut out there for a moment. Uh, we're going to need to have a bowl to receive the butter, nuts, and uh, pancetta after they've been sauteed. And then finally, you're going to need to preheat your oven to 400 degrees. I'm not going to show you that as a step, uh, but that's something you need to do. Preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Okay, that's all of the equipment. We'll break, come back, and start cooking. All right, the first thing on our prep list is to brush the sheet pan with olive oil. So we're just going to put a little olive oil on there and brush it. This is the pan that we're going to use to uh, roast the squash. Now, you could put foil on it, as I've said in many lessons, I don't use much foil. I'm trying to keep my carbon footprint lower. I'd rather wash the pan than waste the foil. Okay, so we brushed our sheet pan with olive oil. The next thing on our prep list is to slice and seed the squash. Now you just need to cut it in half with your knife. Be careful doing this. Okay. Now, you see that there's a pod of seeds inside. We want to take a spoon and just carve those seeds out of there. Now what we want to do is butter and season the squash. Okay, so the uh, first thing I'm going to do is take the melted butter and brush both halves of the squash and also down in the well where the seeds were. I'm not sure if I said earlier how much butter there is. There should be about 10 tablespoons of um, melted butter. It's on, the, uh, it's on the description, but I may not have said that when I was talking about the ingredients. Now what we want to do is season salt and freshly ground black pepper. All right, next thing we want to do is turn them face down on the pan and we want to put them into the oven and roast it for uh, roast them about uh, 1 hour. What we're going for is that they're soft and when you uh, pierce the um, thicker part of the squash with a toothpick, it should pierce very easily. Okay, so we want it to get soft, which should take about an hour at 400 degrees. I recommend that you check it at around 40, 45 minutes. It may take longer than an hour. Uh, so just roast it until it is soft. All right, let's check out our squash. Okay, the toothpick goes through very easily. So I think these are well roasted. Um, let's take a look at the other side. Oh, beautiful. Now what we want to do is let these rest and cool until they are cool enough to handle so that we can scrape the butternut squash out of the shells. All right, now the squash has been cooling for uh, at least an hour, and you know if you if you do it right after it gets cool enough to um, handle, it will uh, be even softer than this and will be easier to scoop out. But I mean, this is pretty easy. 
So what we want to do is just scoop out all of the flesh of the um, butternut squash onto the tray. Now you might see that there's some some caramelized. Uh, th these were face down, cut side down on the tray. So there's some car caramelized um, uh, squash here on the tray. Any of that that you can get up in, you know, when you when you when you, when you get this out of here and you get it into the bowl, any of that you can get is great because it just adds extra flavor. So just want to make sure you don't get any of the the skin. Okay, now we want to put the squash into mixing bowls so we can mix it with the, um, the chef. You notice that I scraped as much of that caramelization as I could off the tray so we can include that flavor in this ravioli. Okay, now let's mix in some goat cheese. I brought this out to room temperature, which makes it a little bit easier. Well, in some ways it's easier to work with, uh, and in other ways it's harder because it's a little harder to get out of the out of the wrapper. Uh, remember, this was about 10 and a half ounces. I had called in the description for about 8 ounces, but like I said, what we're going for is about a mixture of about 2 to 1. So about 2 to 1 um, of uh, Chev. To one part or two parts shove to I'm sorry two parts um, butternut squash to one part shove okay all right so now we're gonna do is mix it up now I can already see we had a fairly large butternut squash there and um, we may have a lot more than we need for the filling but you know what if we end up with extra we'll freeze it use it for some other purpose later on like for example filling manicotti all right so let's mix this up real well All right, now let's adjust our seasonings. Let's taste it. Mmm, very tasty, but it definitely needs salt, okay? I'm gonna add some salt. Add some pepper. I'm adding a fairly good amount because I thought I didn't really taste any salt at all. I'll mix it up again. Okay, let's taste it again. Hmm, I think that's perfect. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover this with plastic wrap and we're gonna chill it for uh, at least a half an hour, maybe more like an hour. We want it to be firm because uh, the warmer it is, uh, the harder it's gonna be to uh, work with when we go to fill the ravioli. So we wanna firm it up in the fridge. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the pasta to room temperature. I'm gonna keep it wrapped in this uh, damp towel. And if you're gonna be cooking the ravioli right after you make them, you wanna bring your water to a boil now in the wide, shallow pan. So we're gonna put that on uh, medium-high heat and bring that to a boil. You can cover it if you want to to bring it to a boil faster. Again, question of whether we use salt. Um, I'm not using salt. I'm using water from a water softener that's slightly salted. Um, some people salt their water for cooking the pasta. I, I usually don't. Okay, now we want to just dust our sheet pan with uh, cornmeal to receive the raviolis like we did in the ravioli master recipe. All right, so we're going to take our pasta and uh, it's pretty sticky because it's been wrapped in this towel. Uh, but we're gonna dust that with flour, just like we did in the pasta master recipe and the ravioli master recipe. Just gonna do a light dusting here on the, on the, on the work surface, okay? 
So now we're going to start running it through the pasta machine, okay? So we're just going to pat it down a little bit so it's a little bit thinner and put that into the machine in uh, setting number one, okay? Which is the rollers being the farthest apart. And again, what we're doing here is we're repeating the um, Ravioli Master recipe at this point, okay? We're going to run it through on number two. Pick up a little flour. Run it through on number three. At this point, I usually cut it in half. Run it through on number four. Run it through on number five. And number six. I'm gonna dust it a little bit more. Okay, now we want to start um, putting the filling on the ravioli, uh, on the um, on the pasta, and making the raviolis. Okay, so remember, we're gonna do an amount that will fit nicely inside the pasta cutter. All right, now we're gonna take our brush and we're gonna brush, dampen the pasta. I'm using the brush also to dampen the pasta and to kind of bring these mounds of filling closer together. I mean, uh, not, not closer to each other, but um, to kind of consolidate the mounds so that they're not too spread out on the pasta. And remember, we don't wanna soak the pasta, we just wanna get it damp. We also want to try to keep the um, uh, the filling all in one place rather than spreading out on the pasta because we're probably going to roll what's left of the pasta so we can make more more make more raviolis. Now we want to carefully lift our first sheet our second sheet onto our first sheet. And then consolidate the mounds by pressing your fingers down onto the pasta, trying to get out any air bubbles. Now we're going to start cutting. Then we're going to lift them up and put them onto the sheet pan, which we have right here. Okay, so so far we've done two, four, six, eight, ten. And we have a lot of pasta left and a lot of filling left. So what we're going to do is squeeze that into a ball, flatten it out, go back to setting number one, and roll it through. Now, there's some, uh, there's some filling on this pasta, which is kind of getting mixed in with the, um, with the pasta as we run it through the machine. 
no big deal it'll just add extra flavor fold it on into thirds on itself dust it with some flour so it doesn't stick too much it might be a little bit stickier now because it's got some of that filling in it you can see that that's getting on the machine a little bit too we'll just wipe that off run it through again on number one we want to run it through until we've got a uniform piece of pasta like we had in the pasta master recipe okay not 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 the ravioli but the pasta master recipe when we first made the pasta we um, wanted to make sure that it was uniform so we ran it through on number one several times there's no certain set amount of times that you run it through you run it through until you've got a nice uniform piece of pasta okay that's pretty uniform so now what we're going to do is run it through on number two all the way up to number six just like we did before All right, now we're going to put down some more filling. Okay, we now have 19 raviolis. I'm going for 24 because I have uh, the descriptions for eight people, three raviolis per person. And I want to have a couple of extras in case some of them fall apart while they're being cooked. Okay, so now I'm going to roll this out again. I'm not going to show that on camera. I'm going to do it the same way I did it before. And I'm going to roll them out until I'm either out of pasta or I'm out of filling. Now I've got more filling, so I don't think I'm going to run out of filling. However, um, if there's any I'm going to do it till I run out of pasta. I've done this down to where I'm rolling out enough pasta to make one ravioli. Okay? You can keep doing it till you run out of pasta. And I'm going to do that, and I'm going to have enough to, uh, to cook for uh, eight people, three raviolis each. And, and, if, and if any fail, we'll have a few extra. And we'll probably have some leftover that we can put into the freezer. You know, I am going to show this on camera in fast motion, and uh, I'll just run it until I run out of pasta.
seven. We have 35 on the tray, and then we have another seven on the um, sizzle plate. Okay, that is uh, the conclusion of making the ravioli. Now we're going to go on to the next steps. Okay, next thing on our prep list is to saute the walnuts in the butter. So we're going to bring this butter up to uh, medium heat. We're going to let it get hot, then we're going to throw in the walnuts. Okay, our butter is uh, getting hot. We're going to add the walnuts. And what we want to do is um, cook these slowly. We'll saute them, but then we're going to reduce the heat. We're going to cook them until the butter turns a bit brown. So we're going to wait till they start to sizzle a little bit, then we're going to reduce the heat. And you can see the butter is starting to um, foam up, okay? That, that means it's getting hot. And once that foam starts to go away, we're going to be getting closer to the browning stage. Okay, our foam is going away, but we still have some... The foam from the butter is going away, but we have some foam that's related just to the uh, sautéing of the of the, um, uh, the walnuts. So what I want to do is get these out of the pan and keep them warm until we're ready to serve. Okay. Now what I want to do is add some duck fat to the pan, about a tablespoon. Then we want to saute our pancetta. Turn down the heat a little bit, it's a little hot. Alright, now I'm going to turn off the heat and add that to our butter and walnuts. And keep it warm until you're ready to serve. Alright, now water is at a rolling boil. Uh, I'm going to do uh, the raviolis in batches. And I have about, I think, 12 or 14 here. Uh, we're going to put them into the water gently. And they're only going to need to cook for about one to two minutes. Okay, it's been a minute and a half, and uh, they are all floating, okay? So we're going to take them out as quickly as we can. Now we're going to plate right away, but uh, if there's going to be any delay, keep them warm until you plate. You can put them in a low oven. Okay, time to plate up, and we're going to put three raviolis per person. Okay, and then we're going to spoon some of the butter, pancetta, and walnuts over each one. Twist of pepper. Little sage from on high. And then some shaved parmesan. Okay, that is the conclusion of less than 77 roasted butternut squash and chef ravioli with sage diced pancetta walnuts and brown butter you can see photos of the final dish at my instagram which is at chef's apprentice cook like a pro next up is a dish i am really proud of and i love it's called the lobster flan um, please remember to subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching